y'all doing ladies and gentlemen look who it is it is me it is i freako freako is here and i am upon you today we have 
gone. Ten shows without freaking out, ladies and gentlemen. Ten shows, ladies and gentlemen. Can you can you believe that? Can can you believe those crazy, crazy, crazy things? Ten shows. No freakouts. Last two shows, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Yesterday's show was difficult actually because of my own I'm going to say my own failures. I own my failures. I just don't let my failures destroy me. Well, theoretically. Hypothetically, sort of. For the most part. The day before that, it wasn't my own failures. It was the it was the human interaction with the universe that was uh, causing the disturbance. Or should I say specifically how the universe was perceptively interacting with me in ways that it probably wasn't even aware it was doing because it doesn't know I exist. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to get ready to do our show. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, that means that all of you know I love you very much. If you're conservative, if you're liberal, if you if you... If you, if you're a, da- I can't say that. I'm sorry. There's, if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, get help, get help. Just seek a therapist. I got nothing for you here. Everybody else, I can get along with you as long as, as long as you don't want to knife me in the middle of my sleep. We're good. <laughs> so, other than Dallas Cowboys fans, we're good. I can even get along with Redskins and Giants fans. I can put up with Redskins and Giants fans. I can do that because I'm a decent human being. So with that in mind, I give you, well, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I get a little bit of, a little bit of this. Warning, the theory you're about to be exposed to is born in the minds of individuals who are limited in our capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them just as you and everyone else in life learn young. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific truths, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firmly held. We do not apologize for anyone we and we do not apologize for daring to express our views and impressions of what we believe in this and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. I think I can do it. I think I can manage it here today. We're doing Frico Talks the News today for... Well, it's... Thursday and it's May 21st 2020 the title of this show and I like to think of these shows as kind of news arts it's really it's a news art that I do here Frico talks the news and in talking the news I hope that what I produce is well this is news art to me this is I use news to to do my art stuff through so that's it's news art there you go Lottie Dottie John Gotti Magic pill therapy and shut down dysphoria. <coughs> Activist muscle versus U.S. regulations and college sexual misconduct dust up. I'm particularly proud of that headline. Peking has the magic coronavirus pill. Team Trump targets smooth sales for U.S. manufacturing transfers from China. We're going to pay you to leave. Media socials of the brain, a theory on the nature of thought. That is our news poem of the day and we'll end up with as our usual our dialectical which is the dwindling case for the emergency part of executive orders and as usual don't forget to get the Frico Talks Daily delivered to your email at Frico.com daily that's Frico.com daily and now let's get set to record our first segment of the show ooh I got issues Hold on, let me... There we go. There we go. Was a little bit too big there. I was just a little bit too big. There's a family show. Going to keep on going. All right, let's get ready to record this segment in three. I'm going to remember now. Okay, I'm making some mental notations. Three, two, one. This is the talk headlines for Frico Talks the News on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. I am Frico of Frico.com. And our top headline of talk headlines is Activist Muscle versus U.S. Regulations in College Sexual Misconduct Dust Up. And we're going to be uh, looking at an excerpt here from CollegeFix.com. And I just want to make a note of uh, where it is that we came from. And in point of fact, where we came from. 
in part newsalike.com the glitz the odd the under the radar the hard to believe news at a glance and if you go there today you'll see intelligent sheep is asked to declassify flynn's talks with russian ambassador house panel to hold private legato call with fcc and defense officials nasa's head of human spaceflight abruptly resigned citing mistakes and finally the media trash governor ron DeSantis over fired florida's data scientist the real story leaves egg on their face you have to click on the links to find out what they are. And uh, they contribute towards me picking. And a lot of times, often, the headlines come from <clears throat> newslight.com. Not always, but often. Activist muscle versus U.S. regulations and college sexual misconduct dust up. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud of that title. I put so much time, effort, and energy, and work, and... Uh, consumptions into that uh, manufactured device that uh, I am immensely proud of the the over the top verbosity of that whole exchange I love I, I, I just love I just love the camp and the, I love it I, I just love it kitsches for me all that all that stuff I'm, I'm down with it so here's an excerpt from the collegefix.com. Title IX consultants tell colleges to break the law in response to new sexual misconduct law rules. That's an interesting title. I mean, in a manner of speaking, I suppose, as usual, these types of titles have a measure of truth to them. Usually, not always, though. In this case, there is a measure of truth to it. The Association of Title IX Am Administrators hosted a webinar on the new regulation last week. One of the discussion points was the provision on making training materials public, according to the slides from the presentation. Stop Abusive and Violent Environments, a due process group, <coughs> made a transcript of the presentation by Atixa President Brett Sok Sokolow, and I believe he is the son or related to Jet that that. Oh, what's his name? The the he, more more Jason or Jacob, whatever Sokolo, the the dude that came. He did the whole, um, uh, basically a Christian version of the ACLU. Uh, this is where this is. I don't know what a Tixa is, but I think this is who this guy is. You could do the research. I'm I'm not I'm not all that interested in the research. Anyway, Save said the webinar had more than forty two hundred attendees. <clears throat> Sokolo allegedly warned wait I'm okay hold on made a transcript of the presentation oh okay so they made a presentation of oh, okay never mind I don't think this is the same person this is oh well, I'm reading this totally wrong this isn't this is that's Jay Seculo I'm thinking of wow no this is the other way around so so, okay, a due process group, stop abusive and environmental em environments. Okay, that's a, I love titles like that. That always makes you feel safe when your group is, has this type of types of, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, anyway, this due process group made a transcript of the presentation by the Attics of President Pre and he and, and uh, let's see. Save said the webinar had more than 4,200 attendees. Sokolo allegedly warned attendees who used training materials from Atixa, the whatever group and other companies, that they cannot be posted publicly irrespective of what the department's Office for Civil Rights says because those materials are proprietary and copyrighted. So what he said, okay, so this is, this is, so then, the Office for Civil Rights apparently noticed that takes a claim that it copy that its copyrights superseded super that its copyright supersedes duly enacted regulation. So, without mentioning the group, OCR wrote that Title IX training material, among other important information, must be posted on schools' websites, no exceptions. It's clear, however, that OCR is referring to a Texas claim going so far as to mention proprietary business information such as materials prepared by an outside consultant. So they, they give you this headline. Now, here's the thing. I gave it this title. Title IX consultants tell college to break the law in response to new sexual misconduct laws. This, this sexual misconduct rules. This is what they're 
the narrative out there is that the sexual misconduct rules are simply that we will have actual due process. Now, I think that there are elements that needed that due process restored. I think the colleges went way too far as far as, quote unquote, protecting the whammons. And they basically created an environment in which there's a whole bunch of uh, vicious, vindictive ladies that can use that kind of power to their advantage and, and, and would and did. Uh, and, uh, but maybe I'm going to have to get around to it eventually. I'm going to have to get around to reading all the Betsy DeVos, all the line item stuff and figuring out my, my suspicion. And here I see something like this. So this is a regulation, which is basically... What happens is a lot of these companies, they have this training material and then they come into an environment and it's not unusual for them to have some sort of disclosure so that their material isn't shared publicly because if their material is shared publicly, who's going to pay for the exclusive ability to have access to the material and be trained by these folks? So it's a, it's a company. So this is not a company, that, uh, consultants that have come in and said, the title leads you to believe, and I kind of kept the theme, you know, I, 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 I kind of changed, I shifted it a little bit, so I gave you activist muscle versus U.S. regulations and college sexual misconduct dust up. And, and that is a little bit more accurate, but I'm still being a, a bit more kind of hyperbolically like in their thing, oh, intentionally so, because <clears throat> I knew I was going to, uh, well, I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was going to be doing on the show here. And, and what I'm showing here is, here's the situation. Now, I don't know anything about this group. This group might be, if this group is in any way, shape, or form advocating for corporate monopolization in, uh, in, uh, uh, application of very high moral supremacist structured uh, law codes into their dealings with their customers, or, and especially if they want to the same as far as government is concerned, well, then I'm probably not for this group. I have no idea. I don't know the degree to which they, where do they fall on the consensual scale? If they fall more towards consensuality, then I got less problem with them. So I don't know anything about this group. I'm not defending this group, not defending anyone, but I'm just pointing out here the college fix. This is an example where you have an issue which has some complex m conflicting rights, if you will, connected to it. You have on one hand, you have a company, uh, a company, a, a group, I don't know what the consulting firm, whatever they consider themselves, and they have this material and they're given this presentation, they've been paid to do this, and then now what the issue is, can the government then say, if you present this, then this gets... Is that really... Is that part of the due process? Because that, that regulation change alone tells you right away that Betsy DeVos's thing was far more than just the simple issue that the... the especially the... Now, there are some conservative media that, that look at things much more fairly, and just like there are some uh, le leftist media that look have a more there there are i'll just say there are media outlets that on that lean left and lean right that tend to see the importance for one reason or another in trying to understand more what really is and letting their audience know more of what really is than and then pitching desired narratives so you'll get nuance from those folks to some degree but on the most part a story like this deserves some nuance because there's conflicting issues at point here that could affect multiple uh, individuals, even the very ones that might take the side of the government here, may find themselves in a position that this save group finds themselves in. And suddenly their material is going to be shared with everyone and they don't want that. These groups, I could see why they would not want this shared publicly. I don't think, I don't know, I think this is a complex issue. I don't think that just somebody tweeting something or well i know not i'm sorry they didn't tweet i was thinking everything is always and then they tweeted this response and it's all when when they're talking about government officials i mean specifically like i've seen this so often so it's the office for civil rights that uh 
Let's see. Oh, they wrote a book. Okay, well, it's, it, they, it, they blog posted. So it's a blog post. A blog post enough is enough to say, oh, man, you can't do this. No, I think this is uh, I think this is legal. I think what this other company is saying, listen, if you do this, we're going to bring charges. And, and maybe, maybe they should. Even, even if I find that these folks are actually for removing all the due processes and just letting anyone accuse anyone of anything and get them to, their lives destroyed so you enable thugs to thug on people, that's not cool, no matter how you slice that. But uh, they, even if they're for that, I would still say, it sounds to me at least on the surface, I think they got a case. I mean, I'm not legal, I'm just saying by... My general understanding of if we're if we're just balancing rights here, I think that they may be it might be more in their favor than in the government's favor in this instance. But you're not going to get a nuanced uh, presentation of this. Instead, you get a title that suggests that this group this this is what their audience is just going. It, it builds this narrative, doesn't let you look at this in a in a nuanced way to assess all of the. Of the balances of interest of all of your neighbors, for instance, you just whatever advances your particular your particular vehicle of power for your particular tribe. I gotta move on. Faith healer dies of coronavirus. Yes, he healed people of it before he died of it. Of course, otherwise, why this title? I did that. I enjoyed writing that. I'm gonna go through this real quick here. I don't mean any disrespect for this gentleman, but. Uh, I am definitely the whole faith healing stuff. I've got some personal issues with that. As a Generally speaking, I think anybody that has any type of belief system in which you see individuals that represent what your belief system is in a way that kind of reinforces the notion that your belief system is, uh, is kind of bonkers, then you get a little sensitive. And this faith healing stuff is a particular trigger of mine as a Christian. All righty. <clears throat> this is an excerpt from Christian Post, so it's good to see Christians calling out, kind of calling out this stuff. And there are Christians, plenty of Christians that do. Pastor dies from coronavirus after laying hands on infected followers, declaring them healed. Franklin Endefor, a popular self-styled prophet and former presidential candidate in Cameroon, died from coronavirus Saturday after laying hands on dozens of, infe of his infected followers and pronounced them healed from disease. He was 39. I'm not going to read the rest of it. I'm just going to right over that I just wanted to hit on that just just a little bit there just in, uh, yeah yeah the, yeah well it got the sm short treatment because the story in the top got way too much t uh, t attention I want to get a little bit more attention to this story maybe this one right here fed Apple encryption triggers another round of make it illegal to encrypt stuff yeah that's pretty much what it what, what what's happened here this is from Politico Pensacola case breakthrough renews encryption battle. Top Trump administration officials on Monday used a surprise breakthrough in the Pensacola naval base shooting investigation. I don't know what the surprise. I want to know what the surprise breakthrough. Do, do they just mean that they had a breakthrough and that was the surprise? Hey, look, uh, that thing worked. Wow, that's a surprise breakthrough. Yeah, can you do it again? <laughs> No idea. All right. Let's just go on a surprise breakthrough. <laughs> uh, to investigate, to uh, investigation, to repeat their familiar refrain about the dangers of end-to-end -end encryption. After announcing that the FBI, the dangers of end. No, 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 no. Hold on. You know what this warrants. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Wanna, I want to illustrate a point here. All right. I'm going to put that there. Put that down. All right. And we have typing some stuff. Trust me. That's one of the reasons I got the music in the background. Because I know you're going to have to be entertained while I do stuff. And you got that excellent music. So we're just going to... Don't worry, we're doing stuff. Listen, I just want you to notice this right here. Boom. There you go. About the dangers of end-to-end -end encryption. No. About the advantages of end-to-end -end encryption. No, it's only a danger if you're a psychopath. 
If you're a psychopath, it's a danger because it means that you can't keep controlling the uh, the individuals. The individuals. The individuals. The individuals. You cannot keep controlling. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're going to do that. And then we're going to do you up there. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. The individuals. You cannot have the individuals having access to being able to communicate with one another. Because if they can communicate with one another, they can exchange value with one another. Anonymously. We won't know what they're going to do with it. Do you imagine? Could you imagine if human beings had the power, the actual power to demonstrate consensuality for any nation state? The nation state that has a, a citizenry that has the consensual power to walk away and chooses not to is the only just nation state. There you go. Playing your game, your moralistic moral supremacist game is the only justice is a consensual justice there you go do that after announcing that the fbi finally bypassed the encryption on the alleged shooter's iphones attorney general william barr told reporters the developments in this case demonstrate the need for a legislative solution to the encryption debate what no no there's no debate it's advantageous to we poors to develop end to end high high secure as close to anonymous powering empowering as we can end to end encryption with all of the dangers that that entails because the liberties i can assure you will far outstrip them and a lot of the conditions that create the let's just say there are always going to be individuals who no matter what they're going to do bad things with anonymous power. But I can assure you that anonymous power on the main will, will change the game as far as the conditions that produce the vast majority of humans that would be willing to do bad things with anonymous power. Not that the, the vast majority of humans, overwhelming vast majority of humans, won't do bad things with anonymous power. They'll just do... Yeah, yeah, it'll just be good old... Uh, good old good value exchange kind of stuff going on nobody's selling nuclear waste to one another although there are going to be people to sell nuclear waste and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that that's right i am okay with people selling nuclear waste because i they're already doing it <laughs> the, the the system that we have now hasn't prevented it and it it, it never will and this won't really well never mind i won't go down that road i could go down a long time and i'm trying to keep myself disciplined generally i'm trying to keep these things down to 15 minutes each even this section but i didn't manage that today got it to 18 minutes but that's okay because we're at the end so i'm not going to read any more of this story there's a there's there's some other stuff in there if you go to frico.com right now and you can read some of this but the bottom line the bottom takeaway is this about the dangers of end-to-end -end encryption about the advantages of end-to-end -end encryption which one are you in you better be in the bottom you better be in the bottom you should be in the bottom whether you're a progressive or a conservative whether you're black or white whether you're gay or straight the only people that should never be in the ad advantage in any encryption are the Dallas Cowboys fans. They shouldn't have access to computers. It's a fact. It's a fact. Get Frico's Daily Freaks. Just enter your email and click subscribe. Go to Frico.com and you'll see the little, little, little thingy there. Get Frico's Daily Freaks and there. Subscribe. Coming up next is the talk feature. And the talk feature is going to be... Well, let's see. What is that talk feature? Peking has Peking has the magic coronavirus pill. That's what's coming up next. And thank you for watching this segment. G turn it off. I will. I will seriously. Will seriously get up off this. All right. I'm going for some. 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 Yeah. Okay. Whatever. We'll see how that plays. I watch these later on. I, I watch my stuff afterwards, but I don't watch it because I enjoy it or don't enjoy it. I watch it just because I'm studying. 
trying to figure stuff out. Listen to what people tell me. My wife tells me stuff. She's a huge help. She's the reason that I am who I am today. So everybody uh, understands that, I'm sure. So I better do amazing things. Otherwise, you people are, are in trouble because my wife does not want me to reflect what she is poorly. Okay? You hear that? So like, share, comment, and all that stuff, and and uh, send me money, freeco.com slash tip, and uh, just go to PayPal and send me money. That's it. It's, if you're a gazillionaire, send me more than money. Send me a gazillion money. A gazillion money. That's what we're looking at here. Let's get ready to get the next segment recorded. We are at our poop, 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 poop. I did not want to go so late. I apologize. All right, let's get this. Let's punch this puppy in the head. Let's make this happen. And all right, three, two, one. This is the talk focus for Frico Talks the News on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. I am Frico of Frico.com. And our top focus is Team Trump targets smooth sales for U.S. manufacturing transfers from China. But before we get to that, ladies and gentlemen. One of the places that we get these stories from is one of the sites that I aggregate links on, and that is Obamacare.tv, free market social engineering for the masses. And if you went there today, you would get the European Union is dead but does not yet know it. Somaliland to take case for self-determination to international court. Company is making milk without the moo. Amazon leapfrogs Apple in Fortune 500. And now, back to Team Trump Target. Smooth sales for U.S. manufacturing transfers from China. So the Donald has decided that it is time for America to become self-sustaining for strategic reasons. Reasons that I would support within the framework of the course of enterprise governance competition currently going on between America and the rest of the world with specific note of China as the main competitor in that venue is absolutely the right decision to make. Watching the Corpo State media continue to push against this effort, couching it mostly covertly but often overtly as xenophobia and worse, using the same talking points literally as the Chinese agit prop vehicles in the West employ it is really helping a lot of Normy Americans see just how far some factionalists are willing to go in the name of preserving the source for their incredible, unaccountable power, their access to the Chinese markets. And here's an excerpt from Economic Times. In, well, it's India, IndiaTimes.com, but it's their Economic Times division. U.S. moles paying companies tax breaks to pull supply chains from China. U.S. lawmakers and officials are crafting proposals to push American companies to move operations or key suppliers out of China that include tax breaks, new rules, and carefully structured subsidies. Interviews with a dozen current and former government officials, industry executives, and members of Congress show widespread discussions underway, including the idea of a, quote, reshoring fund, unquote, originally stocked with $25 billion to encourage U.S. companies to drastically revamp their relationship with China. On Thursday, Trump signed an executive order that gave a U.S. overseas investment agency new powers to help manufacturers In the United States, the goal, Trump said, is to produce everything America needs for ourselves and then export to the world, and that includes medicines. Now, here's the part. Here's the part, ladies and gentlemen. Just step away from this. Just, 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 where can we get to this? Can we not see? Oh, here we go. Here we go. This part. This is the part that bothers me. This part, the first part, produce everything America needs for ourselves. All right, all right. And then export to the world, and that includes medicines. You know what? Why would we want 
for other countries what we don't want for ourselves. Why would we want other countries to be dependent on us just so that our lives can be better? I say no. I say the thing that we would want to do is to make them self-reliant. What we really want to end up trading amongst ourselves and amongst other nation states would be more or less the luxury items, the fun items, the, the items that are unique to particular cultures and times, whatever that, uh, that countries offer, particularly unique aspects of those nation states that we, we want and they want of ours. And that's the trade. And that, and that trade, if something fundamentally catastrophic happens to that trade, Okay, so we don't get as much sugar stuff as we usually get. But okay, we're not life-threatened. Our essentials are provided for by us. This should be the goal of every nation-state in the world. And if you really wanted to see democracy in the world, America, if you really wanted to see the American spirit in the world, as you call it, or variably been called, then what you want is a, a world filled of nation states that are self-reliant, self-sustaining. We don't need to continue to rely. We don't need, we don't need to be the exporter of the world. We don't need to be the monopolistic control of world markets in order for us to live prosperous, happy, healthy lives. And I want prosperous, happy, healthy lives. I'm not for any of this 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 uh degrowth crap and let's lower our expectations as to as as to the 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 funness with which we can experience life screw you man i'm all for excess so long as it's excess that you're actually paying for uh but i'm i'm just against excess that you're not paying for i'm against excess that comes from from gains that well i would say arguably not good systems that allow individuals to amass the types of gains that they do in the ways that they do in our current world but that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation we're keeping thing, keeping things focused here okay keeping things focused okay so this is uh i jumped to the to the, to the i am actually recording the focus I see what I did I see what I did interesting just noticing here ladies and gentlemen so what I ended up doing was I skipped the talk feature so the talk feature is part of the headlines and then I went to the focus so well this show is going to be a little bit Wow. Not sure. Oh, wait, wait. No, I know what I did. Never mind. I'm going to keep going. This is the focus. We're just going to do the focus now and the feature later. So we're going to do this in back. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. All right. This is so awesome. So, so awesome. But I will change the uh, the window here to here. Here we go. Fake brain is key to real feel fake limbs. There's a lot more, by the way, I could have said about this story up here, but I'm not going to. Some algae find themselves caught up in a snare, stuck up, sucked up, as it were, into a metaphorical needle and injected metaphorically and literally into neurons, enabling scientists to create brain matters that they can communicate with using light. This means, well, it means a whole ton of stuff we probably can't even fathom as of yet. But immediately, it means the doors will open to the advance of prosthetics, replacements of fallen parts, so to speak, with spooky, cool, and real qualities that make the fake not only nearly indistinguishable from the real on the outside, but even indistinguishable from the real on the inside in the fields and, and this is an exact replica this is not an exact replica of what we're talking about it's whatever copyright free dudes excerpt from sciencedaily.com artificial pieces of brain use like to communicate with real neurons from science daily 
Researchers have created a way for artificial neuronal networks to communicate with biological neuronal networks. Artificials with biologicals. How about we just do that? We'll just say that. The new system converts artificial electrical spiking signals to a visual pattern that is then used to entrain the real neurons via optogenetic stimulation. Optogenetic stimulation of the network. This advance will be important for futuristic neuroprosthetic devices that replace damaged neurons with artificial neuronal circuitry. Optogenetics. Optogenetics is a technology that takes advantage of several light-sensitive proteins found in algae and other animals. Inserting these proteins into neurons is a kind of hack. Once they are there, shining light onto a neuron will make it active or inactive depending on the type of protein. In this case, the researchers used proteins that were activated spe specifically by blue light. In their experiment, they first converted the electrical output of the spiking neuronal network into the checkered pattern of blue and black squares. Then, they shined this pattern down onto a 0.8 by 0.8 millimeter. 0.8 by 0.8 millimeter. Cool. Oh, no, never mind. They get it. 0.8 by 0.8 millimeter square of the biological neuronal network growing in the dish. Within this square, only neurons hit by the light coming from the blue squares were directly activated. Spontaneous activity in cultured neurons produce synchronous activity that follows a certain kind of rhythm. This rhythm is defined by the way the neurons are connected together to types of neurons and their ability to adapt and change. Now we're getting we're getting to the, to, 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 to the big payoff here, folks. All right, here comes the payoffs. The key to our success, says Levi, was understanding that the rhythms of the artificial neurons had to match those of the real neurons. The rhythms, the rhythms, the rhythms. So, and all of their patenting and all of their efforts to synchronize, that was the one factor that produced repeatable results. Once we were able to do this, the biological network was able to respond to the melody sent by the artificial one. Preliminary results obtained during the European Brain Brow Project help us to design these biomimetic. Oh, that is so cool. Biomimetic artificial neurons. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you biomimetic artificial neurons. Imagine if you could get to the point where you could actually you could rip like if, all, if, if somebody was paralyzed from the neck down that you could literally rebuild their entire nerve neuronal network that would enable them to fully feel and function again. Imagine. Imagine there's no paralysis. And celebrities aren't hogging space on YouTube. I digress. If you're watching during the coronavirus, you'll get this. If you're watching this after coronavirus, now that you know that this was made during coronavirus, you'll get this. Incorporating optogenetics into the system is an advance towards practicality. It will f allow future biomimetic devices to communicate with specific types of neurons or within specific neuronal circuits. The team is optimistic that future prosthetic devices using their system will be able to replace damaged brain circuits and restore communication between brain regions. At University of Tokyo, in collaboration with P.R. Kono and Dr. Ikiuchi, we are focusing on the design of biohybrid bio -hybrid neuromorphic systems to create a new generation of neuroprosthesis. I'm telling you, man, whole nerve systems replace. Imagine, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine. And I think we're going to end it here. These are the. This is the end of the focus segment, which was supposed to be the feature segment, but it's now the focus segment. It's still the focus segment. Coming up next, what was supposed to be coming up next after the headline segment is actually going to be the feature segment. They're going to get back to the feature segment. And there we go. So we'll get that lined up. And that's what's coming up next. Oh, boy. Wow. Dude. Yes, 
screwed the pooch. I screwed the pooch on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Well, at least I did do the Obamacare lead up, but I didn't do the, oh, I, I know what I got to do. I got to do the uh, pioneering news site. All right. Also, this is, I just cannot get this music right. Now you're too loud. There's another one that was too loud here. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were too loud. There we go. There we go. All right. We got we got things fixed. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's get to the talk feature. Let's record the talk feature in three, two, one. This is a talk feature for Frico Talks to News on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com, and our feature today is P. King has the magic Coronavirus pill. Yeah. Now, often where we get stories that we put in the feature, it's from this site, pioneeringnews.com, one of the sites that I, Frico, I I run. These are news aggregate sites, news link aggregate sites. And if you went there today, you would get humans and Neanderthals may have shared jewelry designs. Taiwan reportedly nears deal to buy U.S.-made mobile coastal defense system. U.S. Department of Energy rushes to build advanced nu nuclear reactors. And Patria, U.S. Army, to, de 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 to determine feasibility of Patria Nemo mortar system. That is a, a remotely, well, it's a it's a, it's a non-human trooper. I'll just say that. It's a non-human trooper. How about we just go with that? Let's get back to our, our Peking story now. Every once in a while, I like to highlight the many potential cures, therapies, potential vaccine solutions that are being worked on around the world. This latest potential game changer in the fight against coronavirus comes from the alleged source of the coronavirus china china how many people when they say china they have to stop and say nope that's wrong china i bet you i bet you there's a few Peking University researchers think they got themselves an effective therapeutic drug that could significantly reduce the death rate of the coronavirus, and they will have it available sometime later this year, selling it to the rest of the world. And this is from India Times. A new drug can stop coronavirus without vaccines, says Chinese researchers. According to Peking University researchers, a drug is being tested to not only cut down on the recovery time, but also enable short-term immunity from the virus. To the infected. The drug has shown promising results during animal testing and now will be tested further for efficacy. Suni Yi, director of the Beijing Advanced Innovation Center for Genomics, told AFP that the drug had been successful at the animal testing stage. When we injected neutralizing antibodies into infected mice after five days, the viral load was reduced by a factor of 2,500, said Z. That means this potential drug has a therapeutic effect. Once taken, the drug makes use of neutralizing antibodies that are produced by the body's immune system to restrict the virus infecting cells. The team managed to isolate these from the blood of 60 recovered patients, AFP stated. The drug is expected to hit the market later this year and will help combat the potential winter outbreak of the virus, which is gripping the entire world. And that's actually not hyperbole. That's actually not hyperbole. Listen, don't don't forget to tip your free going. Listen, the, the, the talk focus as I scroll through. That's not next, because I already did that. I did this in a little reverse order. Don't, but don't forget to tip your Freako. Go to Freako.com, tip. In, uh, send me all. Send me, if you're a gazillionaire, send me all your money. If you're not a gazillionaire, one, two, five dollars. After the break, the news poem. And our news poem of the day is Media Socials of the Brain, a Theory of the Nature of Thought. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to leave you just so abruptly because you know I'm a decent human being. I'm a loving human being. I'm a, I'm a father. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he's a father. But he's a father. I'm a father. It's okay. All right. I think I said I'm a father enough. I think everybody gets the non-joke. All right. Well, we're about ready to... Uh, 
about ready to head on off into the, uh, we got to do our liquid exchange, the ins and the outs of the liquids. We got to do some other, we got to freshen up, pulling in a little bit more powders, see if my wig came in yet. You're going to love it. It's really awesome. And uh, I guess, I guess we're all set here. We're all set to take you guys out to break. We're going to see you in a few minutes. Don't worry. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. We got two more segments left, so don't leave me, folks. Stay with me. Stay with me. Ah! That's what happens when you hit the wrong freaking button. But we're all right now, folks. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Listen. I wouldn't leave you so high and dry. You know what? Before I go on break, let me make this note. Let me make this note to you. Ten shows since Freako last freak out. Freak out. Ten shows. We're going to make it to 11. I feel really good about our chances. If we make it to 11 shows, that means we are more than halfway to our goal of equaling 21. And from there, world record time again. We'll be living in world record land. So, so keep with me. If you're a Christian, pray. Whatever else you want to do. Whatever else you are. You know, keep with me. Cross your fingers, toes, and your eyes if that helps. Don't do it if you get a headache, though. And uh, yeah, let's we can we can make this happen. We'll, we'll we'll see you in a bit.
This is your trustworthy and reliable Freco. <clears throat> I'm here. Come rain or shine. Come 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 heck or high water. I'm here. I am I am the postman of news. Post person of news. You know, a little side note, I saw this little I think it was Tim Pool. Maybe it was Tim Pool. Please forgive me if I'm saying something inappropriate or wrong about dear beloved Tim. <clears throat> I didn't watch the video, but I did see the headline. I, I'm hoping I didn't watch the video. Maybe I should. But uh, the the headline was it was about the UN seeing some suggestion about using certain types of language when you're not talking. Now some of it is a bit, uh, I guess, because the UN tends to favor the more authoritarian branch of SJW. So of course they're going to push it beyond what I would. But I really want to. The whole thing of if you're, you know, don't not not assuming boyfriend, girlfriend. I think for the most part, I I don't really sweat people, but uh, that whole say partner instead of girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, there are some circumstances where I might not because I think somebody's uh, gay or straight, just for various reasons I might have a reason to say partner, but I wouldn't want to put that into the canon of, man, we really should, let's be indignant if somebody does, if somebody says, hey, you got a girlfriend? This is a young boy, you see, you, you could, you have a lot of reasons to know and believe that dude is, you're going to say, you're going to say girlfriend, you have plenty of reason to know that you're going to say girlfriend when you're talking to the kid, so, so, of course, of course they go way beyond what I would want, but general saying like male person as opposed to mailman was a big deal i think that's a good idea i think these these are this is this is to me this is this is a reflection of reality there was a time when you could say mailman because 99.9 percent .9 of mailmen were mailmen but now <clears throat> that's not true I think that more often than not, I see male women as opposed to male men. So I like saying male person. Myself. I, I naturally want to say male person because that's the visualization that I have. It matches reality. And a lot of these are like that. So uh, I don't know. I'm not really. I don't. I'm just. I'm done playing the game. I'm not saying Tim Pool is doing this, but in general. And this show is hopefully highlighting over and over, and I've, 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 hopefully I highlighted in that last story about the the college fix story about how when you're when you're when you're thrown in with a faction, you have to you have to not give in certain areas, and so if the SJW authoritarian is right about male person, I'm not going to be all apoplectic about male person because they're wrong about insisting about well I won't say the wrong to me subjectively <clears throat> as I the way I see the world they're wrong making also then extending that insistence to the whole partner thing that's make sure you say partner or whatever I'm not doing that that's just not going to happen again within context there are many instances in which I very well might I'm not you know if you will do it I have no problem with anybody else doing it either by the way just yeah the, assigning a, a list of do's and don'ts, I wouldn't be for that either. Would, you, you're sending out a, a list that says to everyone, make sure people are falling in line. I'm not for that. Anyway, I went on long enough with that. Time to get back to the show. And it's appropriate with some of the things I just said. Now, this is appropriate. Warning, the theory you're about to be exposed to is one of the minds of individuals who are limited in our capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in the front yard. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific proofs, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. 
Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firmly held. We do not apologize to anyone in our family. We do not apologize for daring to express our views and impressions of what we believe in this and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. That is the plan. The plan that I have is... Well... It's that I don't freak out. And if I don't freak out, I get to change that 10 to an 11. And that's what it's all about. <clears throat> let's let's just get right back into this right away with the news poem. Let's get to recording. Three. You know what? Warning, what I told you about to be exposed to is warning the minds of individuals. No, 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 I don't want you again. I think I'm going to do it like this from now on. I'm going to do it like this. All right, here we go. I'm going to try something here. Ready? Three, two, one. This is the news poem for Frico Talks the News on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. And our news poem for today is... Media Socials of the Brain, A Theory on the Nature of Thought. The universe was never prepared for the sugar and spice, the fire and vinegar of the machine of brain-happy, brain-doomy machines, the social medias. It seems researchers are just now starting to look at the possible ramifications for such repeated social media actions on the overall human experience. Be they engaged in this looping your feels stronger and stronger machines or are actually conducting action in the flesh between flesh with flesh sans the digital divide. News first, poem follows. And this is an excerpt from Bustle.com. First time you've showed up here. What happens to your brain when you scroll through social media for hours? It won't be known how the specific ways we're using social media during the pandemic will affect our brains for years, but experts are toying with some theories. On the basic level, social media activates several areas of the brain at once. Sedgel says that it tends to stimulate the visual processing areas of the brain as you interpret the incoming information and the auditory pathways to interpret any sounds or music. So it tends to stimulate the visual processing areas. And it, it does, it also tends to make, and, and the auditory pathways. Okay, so wait, what are you saying here? Let's just break this down. Okay, so here it says, so what it does is, you know, the part that's like, you know, the things that you see, yeah, that part, that part's activated. Yep. Yeah, also, you know that part that helps you hear? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does that too. Does that, that, that's activated. And then it also produces activity in your expressive pathways. Ah, the ones that control speech and language. More, more, more so, not just really, really more the emotions, the, uh, it really, uh, see, my by the way that I see the universe, what these social medias primarily, fundamentally do is they tug at your apex existential benefit and cost. Benefit and, well, I'll say, I guess I'll just say benefit system because ultimately it's the benefit system. Even if you're trying to protect the perpetuation of the feeling of achieving apex existentiality as you can do through Facebook. Uh, through whatever. The, especially through the, the media in which you have those quick exchanges. And what I do here on YouTube, is I, if you're watching this on YouTube, even on the other DLive, I'm posting videos, I'm posting live streams. I don't have an audience yet, so I don't really have that exchange. So all I'm, I'm not, I'm not in that, I'm not in it in the same way that we're talking about here, and I've been in it. I just not anymore. I don't do it anymore. I stopped about two months ago, 
So far, I haven't really, maybe it's not been that long. I don't know how long it's been. Maybe a month, probably no less than a month and no more than two months that I've, I've just walked away. I said, nope, no more. Because to me, I recognized that it was, I, I wasn't able to pull myself out of the vortexes that it took me down. I was an irresponsible user, I'll just say. It took me into the worst of the worst fears and glories and whatever so no no it it just it just it just made me feel the constant feedback loop whether that feedback and what you were looking for was feedback loops that confirm the glory of your age in your own head for the most part and that's the same for 99 percent of us so don't feel like you're not. I'm not talking about you because I can almost guarantee you that I am. And it affects your focus. It activates similar brain regions to the ones used when focusing your attention on cognitive activities like reading or playing video games. You can end up scrolling for hours because your mind's so tuned into your Instagram thing. No, the thing about it is it's always, it's always these small little endpoints that you know you have ahead of you so it just keeps you going because there's another endpoint and then there's always another endpoint and another endpoint but there there's never long a, <coughs> a wait and you get this often in in a in a short period of time you get these tremendous lips and lows and and this body whatever this biochemical feedbacks and what we're just now beginning to understand the nature of that whole exchange the the, the, what's fundamental to the way that I see see things in the world is 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 this whole the nature between these these areas the the biochemicals that influence what I call the the heuristic institutions the parts of you that create your reflexive responses to the world uh, how much of that is the biochemical feedback where what parts of that are you what parts of that are beyond you what parts of that have been put in there by others that were built into you before you ever had a chance to understand and that whole exchange is is <clears throat> is what we're talking about and and these social medias there they enable us to experience the the tremendous dramas and glories in highly factitious forms factitious man-made crafted and i mean when i say factitious i mean I have a connotation of highly crafted, uh, a sense of is, was, always will be kind of kind of in, into it. That's that's what it's like when you put your words to letters, typed letters in very neat forms on on digital gloss. And you have the capacity to add in uh, some of the, the most advanced spe visual special effects that the most expensive folks have access to that you have access to on the cheap. And you get that whole reason why these things are so glorious for us. <clears throat> so with that in mind, <sighs> let's get to the poem. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to keep it here. But you know what? It's good that I went back because then I began. Yeah, I like beginning it back here. Yeah, Here we go. Now we get to the poem part of the news poem. Media Socials of the Brain, A Theory on the Nature of Thought. Get to you. Get to you. Ready. Submit. Update status. Get to you. Get to you. Process. The brain takes me into the loop. I love the loop body flow. The self is the singular command. Digit. Insert. All from the screen. The screen. Get to you. Get to you. I beg my life. Do not deny the scene, she said. I want to DM you. She didn't just DM me. The process. The why. Instant control of the possible outcome. Relational exchange sans the coffee call. The sugar door knock. Get me? Get to you. Get to you. Expressive. Pathways inject funny fuel into the load. The body controls the outcome. Locking you in a perpetual wait. 
a little longer. Spring, latched to the factitious, shock and all, expressive, explodes. I beg you for my life. Get to you. Get to you. I beg you. Notice my please. I commented about the force of nature within me and the response was gifts challenging my status as a human being. I was reduced to a mean. My life controls the fabric when I explode. No, desist, sever the foul array, nukes itself in my complete and certain wrath. My page, my page, my motherfucking page. The digital castle withstands the replies as vapors gather behind blocked cells, invincibly destroyed. I beg you, my life, get to you, get to you. I could never come down, hold my body, hold me, hold. My page matures as the womb suffers the indignities of passing flows, unoccupied, settled in the letting go, hold! I could not hold you against or with me in this space. So I made you into a meme where I am always the smartest motherfucker in the room. End scene. Mic drop. Blocked. I hope it doesn't get to you. There you go. Well, I have this thing up here for uh, Frico's eye chaps, but I'm going to take that down because I don't think I'm going to do that for a while. It's just I just don't have the bandwidth to be able to do that. I wish I did, but uh, if a billionaire sends me a gazillion dollars, I will do. I'll add this on. That's the deal. If a billionaire, a gazillionaire sends me a gazillion dollars, I will I will restore the Saturday show. But I must wear that shirt. The shirt you see in here. I must continue to wear that shirt. And you cannot have any influence over anything else in my life whatsoever. Than I will do the Saturday show. That's it. So there you go, gazillionaire. And you know you want this. You know you want Frico's Eye Chops to return. Get Frico's Daily Freaks. Just enter your email and click surprise. Supply. Surprise. Click surprise. Enter email and then. There you go. There's some emails. And then click surprise. Dialecticals. Latest dialectical. That's what's coming up next. And that is the dwindling case for the emergency part of executive orders in the times of coronavirus. Coronavirus. That's it. It's the end of the movie. Wow. What did I call this? I forget. A cinepoem or cinepoetic. I like that. Cinepoetic. Let me just check real quick. I just want to see. Oh, no, I didn't do this one. This isn't the Cinepoetic. That's on Monday. Ha, I teased you. I teased you. On Monday, I wrote what I called a Cinepoetic. So we'll talk about that on Monday. Tomorrow, I haven't written tomorrow's poem yet. I'm about ready to do that, actually, after the show. I'm going to write tomorrow's news poem. I have it selected. I know I know that I have the topic selected. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I said... I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. I bid you adieu. I'm trying to be polite, ladies and gentlemen, but these, uh, these nose hairs are all up and in it. I've got a I've got a bit of an outgrowth or something going on. I need some sort of surgical adjustment of the facts before I'm ever comfortable again. So for now I will try to discreetly do the uh 
Hello, hello everyone, how y'all doing? Oh no, no, this is a, oh no, I'm just uh, I just a nervous high, but that's all. My nose isn't itchy. I don't feel like uh, digging up in my nose or anything. That'd be weird. All right, let's 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 get the di <laughs> we're gonna do the dialectical now. Three, two, one. This is the dialectical for Frico Talks the News on Thursday. May 21st, 2020. My name is Frico with Frico.com, and our dialectical today is uh, the dwindling case for the emergency part of executive orders in the times of coronavirus. Now, I posted this image here, and I'm going to make this a bit, a bit bigger. A bit, well, that's just. Ah! Uh, that's back to the poem there. This is a poem back there. All right, I'm going to read this here. That's as big as I can make it. All right. I'm going to read this real quick here. The Pennsylvania, this is from the Pennsylvania Department of Health. I just want to make sure that you understand that. The Pennsylvania Department of Health today confirmed as of 12 a.m. May 19th that there are 610 additional positive cases of coronavirus, bringing the statewide total to 63,666. 63,666. All 67 counties in Pennsylvania have cases of coronavirus. There are 4,624 total deaths attributed to coronavirus, an increase of 119 new deaths. 119 people died on that day then. County-specific information and a statewide map are available on the link that they provided, which is no longer a link because this is a screenshot image. As counties move from red to yellow, we need all Pennsylvania. Okay, whatever. There are 286,000 patients who have tested negative to date, okay? Uh, of the patients who have tested positive to date, the age ranges and all that, okay? Most of the patients hospitalized are age, are hospitalized are age 65 or older, and most of the deaths have occurred in patients 65 or older. In nursing and personal care homes, there are 13,813 resident cases of coronavirus and 2,191 cases among employees for a total of 16,000 at 555, 557 distinct facilities in 44 counties. Out of our total deaths, 3,145 have occurred in residents from nursing or personal care facilities. All right. Are we with us now? All righty. Now, I, I says May 20th, and this is wrong. Let's just say May 19th. May, May, well, as of May 20th is when they posted this, so I'll say, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it should say May 19th, so just read this May 19th. May 19th. As of May 19th, 2020, 3,145 people in nursing homes have died from the coronavirus, right? As of May 19th, 2020, 4,624 are documented as dying from the coronavirus. All right, got that? As of May 20, 20, May 19th, 2020, 63,666 Pennsylvanians are documented as having been infected with the coronavirus. 68% of deaths in PA are from nursing homes, where people with the coronavirus were ordered to be cared for in the nursing homes. It's a big controversy here because... Our Secretary of Health, apparently, along with the New York State Secretary of Health, had ordered that these patients, either with coronavirus or other patients from outside coronavirus that were moved in, that they thought that that was, that was okay. And it just pretty much spread throughout most of, I mean, a, a huge chunk of nursing homes in Pennsylvania, as you hear some of the numbers there. And how many of these deaths were caused by that order? How many more cases are there really? Now, here is where we get into some tricky, I'm going to say spalittles here. How about that? I'll just say that. I'm going to say spalittles. I'm going to make you smaller in air. Get you back down to uh, commendable sizes here. Oh, you're going down to Frico Wire. You can go down to Frico Wire if you want, by the way. You go to Frico.com. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this back up here. Okay. How many more cases are there really? This is an unknown, but soon. 
But some comprehensive testing in California suggests the amount of actual infections compared to documented infections and documented infected could be 9, 10 or more per one documented. So if we go for a conservative estimate of 5 to 1, this is what I believe is a pretty, pretty safe conservative estimate. And I believe it's closer to 10 to 1, and you'll see that reflected here. But let's just say, let's go with 5 to 1. The actual case is on a very conservative perspective, th 315,000 cases with 4,624 deaths. This puts the death rate at what... I imagine is still maybe twice what we will discover the actual numbers. If, for instance, the ratio of known and un unknown infections approaches or surpasses 10 to 1. But let's go with 1.4%. However, we must consider this, the nursing home factor, which accounts for 68% of the deaths at 13,000 documented cases. Factor of 5 would suggest among the elderly set in general that these cases account for 65,000 of the 315,000 conservatively assumed actual cases. Only 20% of the total cases. 20%? See this? 20? 68 but 68% of the deaths. So let's break this down. Among the nursing home potential group, mostly the elderly with some underlying conditions, they represent a potential death rate of dividing 3,145 deaths with 65,000 assumed cases of 4.8%, a figure that warrants significant safety considerations for people who fall into this group. Even if my suspicions are correct, a death rate of a half of that 2.4% would still warrant significant safety considerations, but not quite as much as the rate at 4.8%. Now, outside of this group, we are left with 250,000 cases and 1,479 deaths. This group death rate is 0.5% is or half a percent, meaning 1 in 200 who are infected will die. Within this super group, everyone but the elderly, there's further breakdowns. But in the overall, we're talking about a death rate. Based on Pennsylvania's official numbers as of May 20th, May 19th, 2020, the time I wrote, well, I wrote this May 20th, uh, but the data actually was, was May 19th, although May 20th, that's what it had up on it. So that's how the, that's where the confusion comes from. Uh, and I'm glad I did the screenshot because I took the screenshot on that day, just so you know. Uh, the official numbers as of May 19, 2020, the time I wrote this feature of a half of a percent, perhaps three to five times more fatal than the seasonal flu, a statistic that warrants some degree, but not significant considerations of safety. If my is not, not nearly the degree to which they have destroyed so many human lives in terms of their ability to make a living, not not in those terms. It doesn't justify it at all. Nowhere close. If my suspicions are correct, and the actual numbers of known to unknown cases is closer to 10 to 1, then the death rates among this everyone but the elderly could be 0.25% or one quarter of a percent. At this rate, if Pennsylvania's numbers are playing out across the country like this, who could justify the emergency qualification and the emergency aspect? of governors or any governor's entity in America, orders that violate so openly and so covertly our alleged Bill of Rights. Until there are more comprehensive testings of people in concentration, concentrated population groups, the governments can continue to use vague appeals to visceral fear, fear to continue <coughs> to hold on to the newfound power to take shortcuts to redesign the humiverse to more perfectly suit their particular factional interests. And we don't have to wait. Private groups can come together and crowdfund mass testing in selected sample areas to either prove these assumptions, that the death rates are significantly lower and significantly more people are infected, or that we have reason to be so concerned that our leaders and our corpo state media want us to believe. Even if, at the end, we determine these death rates are real, for PA, the death rate is allegedly 7.2%. That's, that's what it would be if you just took these numbers at face value. We cannot continue as human beings to function as non-humans for sustained periods of time. And if this is to last for a while, the time for being dictated to is over. We must all now become part of the process of determining what all of us do together through consensus, not edicts from opportunistic factional morons. And that is 
by and large, who's in government now, factional morons, it doesn't matter whether they're Democrat or Republican, they're overwhelmingly factional morons. They are all tied to scripts of certain Tarian declarations that cannot be bothered with the facts. Neither side. They all have parts in which the facts are on their side. And they and they and they boy, they just trump those stuff up. And then they have areas in which the facts are not on the side, and they just they will literally just lie, cheat, steal, murder, do whatever they gotta do to assure that the truth doesn't get out there. And they're all doing it. And this is what this is what politics is in America now. It's 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 been here before and now it's here again. It's at this this brutal existential level where where people are just just fighting little warlords fighting for their turf. That's pretty much what we're dealing with now. So what we need to do, go forth and get people tested far and wide. Not through edicts, but through free will offers by non-government folks. Let's get our own numbers, and when we do, let's get our own strategies if our leaders continue to assume they can perpetuate this micromanaged control over human life. And we want cops. We want cops to, to join us in this. We want cops to become part of this. Not not as cops, but as human beings, just 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 our fellow poors. This should be a massively fellow poors effort and you're one of us cops so you need to be part of this effort you don't need to be going answering the call that says go bust up these people because they got their kids with them in a playground you say are you kidding me i'm not enforcing something i know an edict that insane that is that puts way everyone way more at risk and i can't i can't look at the i wouldn't be able to look at the community in the face again after that are you kidding me why would you even put me in that position that, sh that should be your cop response. If you want to continue to have standing in the community, at some point you got to stand up and say no. You know you have that right. You're, 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 you're citizens too. You have a right to say no. I have a right not to violate other people's rights. You should do that. If all of you did that, it will change overnight. You could become peace officers instead of, instead of just, just a gang. You're just a gang right now. You're you're a borderline criminal gang at this point. You're pretty much shakedown artist. That's your that's that's seventy or more percent of your duties now. The actual saving and helping and all that, no, no, no. Hardly any of that is a part of your life, and you know it. And you know if you're a cop and you're listening to us, you break your heart because you know it's true. You know you are not called to protect and serve anymore. You are called to serve. Notice. Notice of termination if you do not comply with this arbitrary edict. Because that's what you do. When you show up, you have guns. And you have a license to kill. And you are immediately placed in the position where somebody decides that they are going to ignore the edict. You, at some point, have to decide whether you are going to escalate to the point where somebody ends up getting shot. And you do that. Why? How do you do that as a human being? As a, as a fellow pours, as a neighbor, as a brother and sister. How do you do that? You're one of us. Stop it. Join us and, and help us figure this out on our own. If, if, these, if these idiots want to keep giving us emergency decrees and acting like they know anything, when everything that they've done and said so far has proven to be terribly wrong, one way, just they're just they're just consistently wrong. They all they talk to us like we're children, like we're idiots, like we're first graders, and they're our teachers keeping us in control. You understand how they speak to you, and you cops, you're us. Stop it! Stop listening to these idiots when they tell you to do idiot things. Join with us, and I even say it right here. I'm glad I said it. And to my police friends, let me add, stop following orders. Follow bills of rights. It's in your interest as well that you do this. You protect your family by protecting us. And I mean us. Against our own government at times, yes. That means, no, I won't do this. It violates their bills of rights. Are you insane? Join your neighbors, your fellow poor, in the fight to preserve our own stewardships over our own lives. Even in times of coronavirus, especially in times of coronavirus. 
All right. And no, that does not count as a freak out. I, I kept myself well contained. Uh, uh, so no, I am going to be able to, to change that that 10 to an 11. And you're not going to see that unless you're watching the live stream. If you're watching this as a segment posted on BitChute or or uh, YouTube's, and I'm looking into since now Joe Rogan is going over to Spotify, and apparently Spotify has video. Okay, guess what? Daddy got to go check out. I plan on doing that. I don't know when. We'll see how well I do with my ratings, how much I get done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into a system now. The type of stories that I'm generally going to be covering on here, these are going to be stories that have, uh, I guess you could say, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm certain either they... They're most likely stories that you haven't seen or they're stories that you'll appreciate that I took a little time to think about them. And I think my perspective is unique enough to, to warrant you checking out a story, even if it's a day or two old. And I'm, I say that with all the humility of a man who is only, I am I'm a, little bit, a little bit more than a week away from completing the task of becoming the world's greatest podcaster. Joe Rogan stepped aside waiting for this, and, and that's coming. So thank you. Anyway, tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I live stream this show on the Action Botsa YouTube channel and also on the DLiveTV.TV Freako channel, F-R-E-E-Q-O. You can join me then, and then you won't miss all the juicy little tidbits between the segments. All righty. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck around and you're still watching, guess what? You get to enjoy this. I've done it, ladies and gentlemen. I got to tell you, this uh, just seeing how we human beings are, watching how it is that human beings, that they just, how many human beings now your knee-jerk reaction in almost any scene is, I'm going to call the cops. Does anybody find that chilling? Is, 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 maybe it's not a new thing and I just didn't realize it, but I kind of feel like now everyone's looking to call the cops over everything. It's, uh, it's a, just another way in which we're, in this instance, it's us that's putting the cops in these bad situations calling the cops over everything what the, you understand every time you call a cop you're bringing a human being with a gun who has the ability to kill you and 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 have a realistic assumption that they will not be held accountable even if even if it's not a quote unquote righteous kill like it's so in the interest of policing to protect the image of policing that, uh, no, no, it's very difficult for you to convict a cop of killing a human being, even if, if it really was totally way beyond what you would want human beings to be able to kill people over. And you want to bring that person into that situation. And they already have so much on their plate as it is because they keep getting more rules, more regulations, more fines. They keep getting more and more reason to get out of their uh, offices and go knock on doors and go walk into playgrounds. They get more and more reason to do this, and we want to contribute to all that and up up the ante, as it were. Just, just nuts. Just just insane. What did I call this episode now? I gotta remember. I think I... Let's see if I got the... Did I get the theme right today? Magic pill therapy and shit? Yeah, I'd say so. Magic pill therapy and shut down the story of that kind of where it's, where, where it's at. I think with that, I'm about ready to punch this puppy in the head and make this happen. We'll see you tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless and good day. Thank you for engaging with Issues. Remember, your views, your suppositions do not make you subhuman, nor do they permit you to subhumanize others. No humans were harmed in the making of the show, and we extend no wish of harm on anyone who hasn't directly harmed or threatened to harm others first, no matter how reprehensible we find your views. We will see you in the next Frico Talks, where Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out.